Only 14% of unmarried youth have not had sex. These are statistics of the whole America. 86% have had sex. So that means that we have only 14% of virgins in America. 80% of Christians believe in casual sex outside marriage. 80%. So the way some people are looking nice like that, they believe you must have sex before marriage. And they are having 1.2 million abortions per year. 65% identifies themselves as Christians. 1.2 million abortions are done every year. And 65% of the 1.2 million identify themselves to be Christians. 78% of adults masturbate. This goes beyond America, the whole world. 78% of adults masturbate, both women and men. 96% of British men masturbate. 78% of British women masturbate. 93% of German men masturbate. 76% of German women masturbate. 92% of American men masturbate. 76% women in America masturbate. 35% of all internet downloads are pornographic related. 35% of all internet downloads. Internet downloads. I'm downloading, I'm downloading, check. <laughs> in every second, in every second, 28,000 users of the internet are watching pornography. As, as I said now, somebody is watching. 56% of all divorces involves an obsessive interest in pornography site because the couples keep watching and demanding for sexual intimacy in very unusual way and he said that about 58 percent are suffering from that every day somebody say every day 2.5 billion emails are sent forth and received 2.5 billion pornographic emails every day somebody has subscribed to about 10 pornography sites that receive updates every day 28 percent of people who access computers at work visit sexual websites while at work what we are dealing with is a serious thing 28 percent of people that have computer before them and there is internet on the computer and say they are working statistics says that 28 percent of workers in the office that have computer and internet watches pornography whilst working one out of seven pastors watch pornography and we cover it up with tongues cover it up with all kinds of spirituality but we are suffering i'm coming to tell you the effect of pornography you have to understand that there is an enemy of the church and is the enemy of lust we can't do anything about it. It's coming after us. Every department, workers, everyone is struggling some way or the other with, with pornography, sexual addiction, alcohol addiction. All these things are working against us. The spirit of lust is after the church. He said that let no man think that God tempts people, but every man is tempted when he's drawn away by his own lust and enticed. So every challenge that comes to human beings are a product of our own lust, our own desires that draws us into a particular way. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Somebody said, I won't err. In other words, don't make a mistake. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lies with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Listen to me, many of us quote this scripture, but we quote it out of context. Every good gift and perfect gift comes from the Lord. It started from the Bible said that if anybody is tempted, let him never say God is responsible. This is why. He said that because every temptation comes because of our own lust because our own lust draw us away from something it draws us away from something it draws us away from something that that takes us to the meaning of lust listen lust is an uncontrolled desire of the human flesh that works against the will of god for that person so it's when your desire steps out of god's will that is lust everybody has feelings everybody has desires but the perfect desire is one that is in line with the will of god 
it becomes last when it steps out of what God has determined for you and the Bible says that last has a way of drawing you away from the will of God and the moment it draws you away from the will of God it makes you vulnerable and open up for all kinds of temptations and the Bible says that every problem and every temptation that comes our way sometimes we may say that God is responsible but it's true probably God was responsible by allowing it to come but it only came as a result of the fact that your last drew you away from the will of God and then that temptation had the chance to come and he's saying that for God every perfect gift and good gifts come from the Lord so when you are in line with God every good gift and perfect thing will come when you step out of the will of God and your desires step out of God's will what happens is that temptations and problems that's why the Bible says that in the end time perilous times will come difficult times will come strange times will come things hard times hard times to a point that people cannot really handle the situations they will find themselves in he said that these times will come but this will be the reason why these times will come he said as men will be disobedient men will be sexually uh, unnatural men will be that he begins to mention the strange acts of men that will be responsible for the perilous times that will come and the bible says that anytime somebody is going through a dangerously difficult situation you shouldn't say that god is responsible most at times it's because our last drifted us away from his will the bible says a man that has no control by himself is like a city without walls anything can step into your life and destroy you and one of the greatest breakthroughs for you to stand and have control over your desire i release you into that realm in the name of jesus wherefore god also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of god into a lie and worship and serve the creator more than the creator who is blessed forever for this cause god gave them up unto vile affections disgraceful affections in in human affections the bible said that when they refused to worship the invincible god god just gave them up so human beings began to develop very shameful feelings and affections that is why today we have people sleeping with animals and people sleeping with toys and the bible said when god gave up on the conscience of men what happened was that men were released to strange desires strange desires things that men began to look for were dangerous stuff and these were not the plans of god for man but the moment God lifted up his control over our desires, we started longing for things that are not human. For even their women did change their natural use into that which is against nature. Somebody say, God have mercy. So when you see a season where homosexuality is being projected seriously into the atmosphere and society you should know that we have also come to a time where god is lifting his hands of the conscience and of the self-control of people and now people are in charge of their own desires and when that happens the bible says even women even women they give up and they begin to change their natural use into things that are against nature and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman bent in their in their last one toward another men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error which was meet so apostle paul is telling us that even men also left the natural use of women and started looking we are in very dangerous times that speaks of the fact that god is giving up one more time on the conscience and on the desires of men and then men are fast running into the cage of lust and these are the effects of this spirit of lust number one it brings separation it is a separation method of hell it's a separation method a separation from God's presence and means to remove God and to stand alone anytime that people are addicted to lust what happens is that I already told you that God steps out of that temple he said knowing not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost God steps out when you finish committing halotry with the body he steps in again but he will never be joined with the halot with you 
and that is how come the bible says that in a great house there are many vessels some for honor some for dishonor purge yourself from these things so that you may be meat for the master's use the reason why you sin against your body when you commit sexual immorality is that you make god step out of your body from using you you may be saved in the spirit but god's presence that must work through your members of your body to bring deliverance and dominion on the earth is no more and that's what is happening to us it's, it's the devil's separation method. Number one, it separates us from God. And number two, it works against you to separate from people. People who are very obsessed with lust and desires, strange desires for things that are forbidden, always want to separate from people. They don't want to come among people. They don't come to church. They don't have friends. Anytime they are moved to do something, they know that must be done in secrecy. They close their doors. Nobody open. If you are in search, a house with search people, they mostly close their door to make sure that nobody enters. And sometimes when you are looking for them, you won't find them. They are the secrets, especially those who smoke and drink. They go in a secret, smoke. When they come, they come to hide so that when they speak, you will not know that they have gone to smoke. It's a separation method. You will get to a point and you will not have any friend around you. Your family members will detect you because of that spirit of separation that works around you. That spirit of hiding. Sometimes it makes you so sick that you don't want to get close to people you feel that when you come among christians you you are inferior and you um, there are there are things that will, they will do that you cannot do they are perfect you are not perfect it happens that way and makes people withdraw and that is an agenda from hell the second thing is that it is a marriage disorienting method strong sexual addiction pornographic addiction and all kinds of addiction is a method to disorient marriages many marriages have collapsed because people watch things and made them desire for things that their partner can give that is what pornography and sexual addiction does to marriages you have gone to watch something you don't know that they are they are dramatizing it's a drama it's a movie it's like nigerian movie it has scripts it has been written for them what they should do and then you you also watch it and then you want to do the same thing it doesn't work in real times pornography is destroying marriages and i told you that 58 percent of divorces in america is connected to pornography and some of you are taking all kinds of aphrodisia taking all kinds of medicine so that you will be as good as a pornographic actor there are some men who feel that women are sex slaves because of what they saw in pornography and the picture that is brought out about four men sees a girl wow and they start to follow after the girl yeah I, I, I will i will i will finish this girl yeah and then they go and they touch the girl the girl turn the next scene they are in a room you think that's how real life is <laughs> that is how come some of you have taken secret slaps you didn't tell anybody these are things that disorient marriages because before people get into marriages they have a picture of how sex must be and they got it through from the wrong source people are using that pornography to create a picture in your mind to make their own money and then to destroy you later sexual addiction is a disarming method people lose their abilities until they have what they are looking for when the sexual desire becomes so strong they can't study anymore they can't learn anymore they lose focus Ammon told his friend uh, Jonadab he told his friend Jonadab that I am sick I can't do anything again until I sleep with Tama my sister I am sick that is what sexual immorality and strange lust does it disarms people so at work the person becomes moody in school the person becomes moody the person comes to church whilst we are all shouting to the glory of god he's thinking about some sexual activity he just wants to satisfy himself i pray for us we are breaking out of such addictions it is a time devouring method it hijacks your system and renders it inactive until purpose is served do you know that every porn addict it is it is proven that every porn addict watches porn for 11 to 12 hours every week every standard porn addict spends 11 to 12 hours watching pornography and then those who have graduated into masters I, i'm sure six hours a day and it's a time consuming method that the devil throws at us you wake up early in the morning you start looking for pornography side 
And anytime you are moving, you are, you are downloading, downloading, downloading. And your whole phone is full of pornographic videos. And you are watching. And at least chance you get that you have to pray or you have to plan or you have to study or you have to do something valuable to your life. You start to search for signs. And you see, the interesting thing about pornography is that you get fed up with one sign. So you want more deeper. So every single time you keep pushing until you get new dirty stuff and every day every single day people are on the site seeking for new things and it keeps consuming their time consuming their time and wasting their lives most of you your lives have been wasted literally wasted because of your desire and your seeking to satisfy yourself with sexual immorality you will keep on visiting one lady all because you want to sleep with the lady you keep on visiting after work you go after lecture you go after work you go after lecture you go don't you know that it's a system eating up your time the least chance you get you move and go and stay with a man for three days and for four days and now four days of your life do you know what it could have done for you if you have even stayed in the presence of god how people have wasted time on trying to satisfy their sexual needs me i'm a witness i didn't date in university so i saw the predicament of those who dated lecture hey child where are you <laughs> so you should know you are expecting you to know and sometimes after lecture after lecture they spend hours talking doing all kinds of unnecessary stuff time wasting process some of you have dated people for seven years eight years because of your sexual lust you have dated you could have finished medicine under seven years seven years you could have done a master's course and have finished under seven good years you have been dating pursuing doing all sort of stuff you are at work and a lady calls you that buy me lunch and you leave office and go and buy lunch to her home do you know it may be church service people can he's a workout he won't come because the girl has called him he would rather attend to the girl before he, he comes to god and even that day you will not come for the service after that that's when he realized he needs god i've wasted time it's a memory devouring method a memory devouring method most of you cannot remember anything apart from the shape of a particular woman you are you are there every day that imagination is your mind so yeah if i ask you first peter chapter 2 verse 9 right now you will never remember but the kind of information you have in your mind regarding sex only god knows there are some people the only thing they think about in life is sex no memory for any other thing addiction those who are addicted to we to only we someone told me when i come to any area no matter where we is sold I, I will locate he said in less than 30 minutes and these addictions are actually carved and shaped by the devil to capture your memory that you think about nothing may the lord release your mind and your heart i said may the lord release your mind it is a faith devouring method a faith devouring method the belief system of people attached whenever they are attacked with affliction of addiction when you are in addiction you don't believe in anything many people in church don't believe when we make prophecies when we preach when we pray they don't believe because the addiction keeps on telling them that they are not worthy god can't help them god can't bless them this prophecy cannot be mine because of what i'm going through i just watched pornography before coming and you tell me that god will bless me he can't bless me it is a system to defer your faith and anytime you allow addiction you set your destiny back very backwards and many of us have given up on so many things we have given up on trying we have given up on establishing something substantial because we feel that we are not worthy there is no dignity around our lives because we know the things that we do 
we know the things that secretly we get ourselves involved in we know very well the things that are, are, are abusing us and we are abusing our own lives with those things we know how we become vulnerable when we are drunk we know how we become so high when we smoke and we know that nothing good can come out of our lives and because of that we lose our faith for everything perfect so we are only in church but we don't believe in anything it affects your belief system and when your belief system is altered you may never see the glory of god the bible makes us to understand that we can only please god by faith and anything that targets your faith has really come to destroy you it's a real enemy resource devouring method every single year the pornographic industry makes 97 billion dollars worldwide they make between 14 to 97 billion dollars who is providing such money who is giving it out it's true internet streaming when you are watching a video and your internet finish oh powerful then you you finish you go you put the phone down and you are watching a porn and your internet finish quickly die star 170 go pass and you pray that the site will not change you quickly fast how we have sold into that which is destroying us and most of us don't know how much of god's glory we lose whenever we fall for such traps make up your mind that i'm going to delete i'm going to break i'm going to step out of that which is taking away my bracelet taking away my staff and taking away my signet how blessed you would have been if you had overcome this one thing of addiction pastors are into it church leaders are into it in fact church has become sex hub after all that is being preached can't you see you are in bondage can't you see slavery sex is not gratification there is no pride the bible calls it dishonoring and the only sexual bed that god calls it honorable is the bed of marriage and many of us can't you see we are in a sex world reading all kinds of articles watching all kinds of things and trying to translate them into your life no when you start reading it it will surely come as a spirit there is no movie right now that they won't bring a sex scene can't you see the devil is trying to get at you this time you don't even have to open any pornographic site it pops up so sometimes when you pull your phones in public be careful there are some add-ons that pops up naked women and the moment you pick your phone in public it pops up and everybody will say you are watching pornography but in reality it's an add-on so when you bought the phone they add on something for you they didn't add on scripture they added on pornography and the church must have our eyes open to this truth that number one god is affected when we get ourselves involved in sexual immorality god is affected our bodies were made for him our bodies were made for him our bodies were made for god and he made himself that one day he will create a people and they will be his temple so he made himself in heaven waiting for the day those people will be created so that he releases himself into those people and paul said will you take that which is Christ and join it to a harlot. He said, will you take it? How long will you continue with that pornography and with that sexual immorality and with that oral sex? And most of you, you are making all sorts of videos to boys and the day he breaks up with you, he brings it online. Show me your naked picture. At, at, at one time, a daughter of mine here brought me an evidence of uh, where she was going to church and the most revered elder in the church kept on asking her of a naked picture with several messages will you not send it to me i will take care of you in school i told her you better be schoolless and recently i told her i'm going to pay your school fees i i will take you through school don't send the pictures out and many young girls are in serious pressure it's either they exchange their bodies for money or they remain poor beggars and struggling all their lives what a wicked world girls are not saved are not safe in the hands of even fathers about 60 years asking for the naked pictures of 20 something years what have you not seen on earth what have you not known 
that about 60 years asking for a 20 something year old naked baby. what are you looking for the spirit of addiction 60 years is left with small for you to meet god you are still looking for naked pictures i don't understand, I don't understand people who, and you are still looking for naked pictures one time god was god asked moses build me an altar and god told moses don't make a steps on the altar and when you are going know what to wear lest your nakedness is shown so even god is not interested in showing people's nakedness how much more you and he came to dwell in you and you are using him to see by force you better desist before you lose almost everything that belongs to you men of god have not been able to rise because of this most young people have not been able to rise because of this you are starting life so well until a woman shows up and you think you've had free food you are giving out your bracelet and giving out your stuff and be giving out your signet and you can't even see and sometimes when we lose everything because of the shame we decide to cover up that experience i pray for people here right now you see one of the first way to break out of it is spiritual impartation and that's what we have been seeing these days when people testifying that i laid hands on them i prayed over them and the first thing is spiritual impartation and that is what i'm doing for you right now if you are in this room and you are struggling in any way with masturbation pornography sexual addictions and all kinds of things i lift up my hands for you by the power of the holy ghost as easy as i'm saying it right now as easy as i'm saying it right now right now right now that spirit is a spirit that spirit that comes to you some of you spirits come to sleep with you the next morning you have to sleep with somebody at all costs and i take dominion right now i take dominion i take dominion I take dominion I take dominion over any spirit that come to afflict anybody in this place there are some of you you don't have feelings for your wife anymore you don't have feelings for your husband anymore you don't have feelings for whoever you are married to because of sexual addictions from today that yoke is broken I said that yoke is broken that yoke is broken in the name of Jesus